online today i am going to solve the problem on trust element using the finite element analysis you can see the question on the screen so here is the two elements the geometry is given in the question so having this subject to external loading as shown in the figure and you need to determine the displacement at the node 3 so, right so at node 3 is here you have to calculate the displacement at node 3 and also the reaction component at 192 okay so 2 is here 192 so it is uh, fixed at 192 so there will be reaction forces at 192 and the element displacement stresses forces everything you have to calculate the element have the modulus of velocity e1 e2 that is 10 into 10 power of 6 lb per in square and cross sectional area a1 a2 1.5 in square right so this is one of the simple problem and having only two elements right so let us say the element first and say this is the element one okay and say this is the element two and you can mention any one or two numbering as your wish because it is not mentioned here but the nodes are represented like this is the node 1 this is the node 2 and this is the node 3 so you have to follow what is given in the question okay you no need to change this okay only you have the option for selecting the element as I have said this is 1 and this is 2 or you can say this is 1 this is 2 right it is your wish now and here the at node 3 two loads are acting one is perpendicular load another is the horizontal load and at each node some coordinates are given like 0 40 40 40 0 0 so 0 0 is the origin where we have to fix our quadrant like i am going to fix the quadrant in this way okay right Let us fix this in the first quadrant. As you can see, this is X and this is Y now. And it is the first quadrant. So here it is a 0, 0, anyhow, right? At node 2. And at node 3, it is 0 and 40. It means the X distance is 0, Y distance is 40. So this vertical distance is 40 inch. And from coming to the node 3, so here 40 40 it means x is 40 and y is anyhow we have taken 40 mm it means this vertical distance for the node 2 okay so this both are parallel anyhow this is also 40 now right and horizontal distance of course we have just now said it's 40 inch right because this is x and this is y for the node 3 so now let us find out the length of each element say the length of element one is this one l1 okay so l1 is the length of this element is not is mentioned here so you have to calculate this so you have this vertical distance and you have this horizontal distance so it is an right angle triangle so you can apply the pythagoras here so where say this one the length is now l1 okay so l1 square is equal to 40 square plus 40 square okay now where this is equal to l1 is equal to under root of 40 square plus 40 square okay so let me check in the calculator yes got 56.56 inch okay so this is the length of the element one so that is l1 now let us check for l2 okay so l2 this length okay this is the length of the element two from here to here one to three and this is for two to three L2 length is already clearly mentioned here. Say 40 inch is the total length of the element 2. So this is for L1 and this is for L2. 
okay so after that here the angst modulus is given e1 and e2 that is same it means both materials are made with the same metals and area of cross section it is constant so both having uniform a1 and a2 it is 1.5 into square right so a1 and a2 is also mentioned now uh, let me explain how to solve this problem so first thing at node 1 there will be two displacement what is that there will be two displacement at node 1 one it will be horizontal displacement and there will be vertical displacement at node 1 so let us say that horizontal displacement will be u and the vertical one will be v okay for better understanding say one for node one and v1 u1 v1 for node one and similarly let us same thing we'll do it at node two say u2 and v2 and three is here and three say u3 and v3 are the displacement because you have to calculate the displacement right so we have mentioned like that and also the angle okay that again i will explain so now go to the next slide so same thing is explained here we have we made this is as node one this as element one this is as element two right so this is this represent the element one so here again explain the degree of freedom as i have mentioned u v right same thing node one they have numbering are changed that's it okay so only one two three four five six like that it is mentioned but i think u and v is the better understanding if you made like that for node one say u1 v1 node two u2 v2 node three u3 v3 like that is better understanding okay so this is element one as already i said i have and same thing they have taken and the horizontal one will be element two as we did already okay and you no need to draw separately for all this you can draw and you can mention everything in the single line diagram only that is feeder diagram for element two and these are the four force element okay that i have not explained once again i will take the time to explain so for force right so at node one there will be no force so here you can say there is an f1 x for the horizontal x is now represent horizontal so at node one there will be vertical force like f1 y one represent the node y represent the axis similarly at two the vertical force let us say 2 y and here 2 x you have 2 x okay at 3 again same thing this is very important to understand here you have 3 x is here and vertically you have you have 3 y okay so now we have two loads here what is that f 3 x is given x is nothing but this is the horizontal one that is 500 pounds lb okay and f 3 y how much it is given vertical one is 300 lbs okay so these are the load acting at node 3 that represent okay right so after that this is the finite element equation as you know that finite element equation that is k u is equal to f so k is re represent the stiffness matrix and u represent the displacements f represent the force vector so this format you have to keep everything in the equation so uh, generally it is written like this f is equal to k into u like that here right both are same right right so f is nothing but there are two nodes only one two so for node one there is a f one x f one x for node two f two sorry i have made as f one y only for node two it is f one x no, sorry f two x and f two y 
hope you are clear f1x f1 it is 1y and here f2x f2y this is the force vector is equal to this is the element stiffness matrix for truss element this equation this entire equation okay is called truss stiffness matrix equation so a by l a is the area a is the angst modulus l is the length of the particular element and c is what c is equal to it is a short form of cos theta where s is given again it is a short form of sin theta okay so theta value here you should know to calculate c so theta for the element one it is having a slope right so what is the angle for the length it is 45 degree okay for the angle of the uh, element one so angle is taken as 45 degree and you have to substitute cos 45 sin 45 then you are getting the c value and s value here yeah. so again you have can multiply c as s okay like that you can go through and the last one is the displacement vector so this uv u1 v1 okay here u2 v2 right like that you can represent now let me calculate the first for element one okay same equation for element one okay how it is connected for the element one for element one will be like this right now represented this is node one this is node two three so for one this is element one and this is two it is connected for two to three okay so it means the nodes from here to here and here to here will be considered don't consider the one here okay only two to three so a e by l let us substitute the value of a e by l length which are already calculated for this element one that we got as 56.56 finally we obtain this right okay anything you can calculate again now for element one let us say k1 a e by l substitute this value here and c c 45 is equal to 0.5 and again you can multiply the c and s whatever you are getting just substitute in this matrix so this become a stiffness matrix so finally later you are getting this one as final output after making the input of a e by l only we have made 10 power of 5 outside and whatever the value you are getting right this you have to multiply within the matrix only make 10 power of 5 outside because for both the element 1 and 2 we have to keep 10 power of 5 outside okay otherwise take entire value inside the matrix why uh, so that the you can make the adding of the matrix okay so here you have to remember either you can take entire a by l value inside the matrix or make some value uh, constant value outside so that both k1 and k2 should be 10 power of 5 outside in that way you have to maintain right now this is for the element 2 now we started for element 2 so their angle is 0 degree because it is in the horizontal axis a by l 1.5 into 10 power of uh, 10 into 10 power of 6 by 40 40 is the length of the element 2 so you got 3.75 into 10 power of 5 so again you have to do the same procedure and finally you obtain this so you can remember here again made 10 power of 5 outside only because this both should be same here okay outside the matrix or if you are getting confusion take entire value inside the matrix make the multiplication here so that there should be there should not be anything outside the matrix so after that we are we are making the global stiffness matrix this is called global stiffness matrix so i have made a separate video on this if you want you can just search in the youtube you will get the global stiffness matrix how to add the matrices so using that method you have to assemble the matrices so you finally you obtain the case so this matrix we call as k matrix okay this total from 1 to 6 what do you got this is called k this is u and this is f so finally you made in a form of f is equal to k into u so in that way you have to right so after that again you have to apply the boundary condition which i already explained right 
so these are the f f three x f three y two forces are acting at node three and the displacement are zero here because the these are fixed with the fix at node one and node two okay one nine two it is fixed it means whatever the displacement we mention like one two one we you we made as u one is zero v one is zero and here u two is zero v two is zero like that as per our representation this will be get zero okay so same thing made here yeah and these are the unknown values you have to find out again substitute everything the boundary condition you apply in the same equation as f is equal to k into u where you have to substitute all these values okay then finally Uh, there is an elimination method that is elimination in then uh, nothing but wherever the displacements are zero okay so that row and the column will get eliminated so this is zero their first row and first column will be eliminated now second one second row and second column third row third column now similarly there is an fourth row fourth column so everything is in the remote from here the remaining is only this matrix will be remaining now after that okay so which is that this matrix 2 into 2 matrix into u3 v3 and also this one okay this is also remote all this only this you have to take it out from this equation as you can see 500 300 outside the matrix is equal to there is a 10 power of 5 outside that we have taken don't forget to this mention okay because it will be there always again in the matrix 0.5 into u3 1.3 into matrix multiplication you have to do and finally this equation you are getting 192 so using that 192 equation you can use the calculator to find the unknown two unknown values so u3 v3 you obtain right so after that if you want to calculate the these are the displacement okay basically you got the displacement at node 3 okay this you have to find out because this is an unknown node 3 it means there is a, there will be u3 and v3 only that we have obtained now after that if you want to calculate the stress here is the steps you can just follow this take this formula okay for element 1 and this is for element 2 these are the stresses equation and make the multiplication then reaction forces also you can calculate right thank you thank you for watching have a good day